Yeah, yeah. I got your message. So you're the confidential source who put that thing in the paper, huh? Yes, I'm I'm the unsung hero you mentioned in your ad. Not that I, I consider myself a hero or anything. Oh, no, you should. You should you are entitled to uh to a just reward. The ad said twenty thousand. Of course, anybody could claim to be the confidential informant. Uh, you got any proof? Only what you asked for. The HIV positive resident at General Hospital. At the end of Dock 52, there's a, an abandoned warehouse. You want to meet me there? Two o'clock this afternoon. I'll be there. She bit? Like a starving orca in a sea of herring. Oh, she really did it. I... All right, let's talk about deploying our resources. The meeting this afternoon, I will get her to repeat as clearly as possible that she was the one who leaked that rumor to the paper. But you have to make sure that you get the whole thing down in videotape for posterity. Hey, I'm pretty good with the video camera. No, no, that's OK. I'll do it. We're not the ones hanging Courtney. She's doing it all by herself. So this is where you found Green. Yeah, yeah, he was right there. And yeah, he's pretty messed up too, man. This shouldn't have happened. So what, the hospital fired you but for trying to just help somebody out? It's so, called bureaucracy and I hate it. So then why are you hanging around there, man? Bounce. There's more to this than meets the eye. Well, you know, I really don't know what you think you're gonna find here, man. The cops already swept the place for evidence and they yeah. came up empty, so. Why did Green uh, end up in this alleyway? Look, I don't know what, G.H. is across the street. You know, maybe he was on his way over there and took a wrong turn or something. I don't know. No, he wasn't strong enough for that. And if someone was chasing him, they must have been nearby. Hey, guys, what's going hey. on? Hey. <laughs> it's like a doctor's convention around here. I thought I would find you here. Come on, Lambert. Just two born-again bloodhounds on me. Did you find anything? No, but I'm still sniffing. We both know that your reputation here at GH is uh, slightly tarnished. Well, thanks to Dr. Collins. Well, whatever the reason, I'm your best chance at your regaining credibility. In exchange for what? Convincing Allison to stay away from Jamal Woods. Convincing her? No, convince or persuade her, whatever your psychological terms are. You want me to scare Allison into submission? Only this time, without drugs. Well, I think I know exactly how to keep Allison in line. <laughs> so when are you two so buddy-buddy? Your grandmother and I are, are very concerned about you, Allison. Yeah, well, I'd rather empty bedpans than have a session with Dr. Feelbad. Thanks. Allison! What is so important? important you have the brim just so trench coat collar always up hey what do you think eh? casual yet covert you ready <laughs> i'm not going you're gonna miss seeing courtney get caught in her own snare oh there's something more important i gotta take care of neil loves you nothing is going to change that yeah, i got my fingers crossed you ready, Mr. Bond? Actually, the one I most admire is Hercule Poirot. Did you ever notice that out of all of them, he's the only one who always managed to eat well? Neil's gonna understand. I'm so pissed at Courtney for pushing it to this point. Or maybe... Maybe I just... didn't want Neil to find out this way. Well, maybe it's time Neil did find out. I don't want him finding out from Courtney or hearing it at school. It's just 
figuring out what to say, you know? Get out of your head and look in your heart. Then you'll find just the right words. Yeah. Colleen, have you seen Allison Barrington? She's late, and believe it or not, that's not like her. She was on her way to your office. She got sidetracked. Cute intern. Mrs. Barrington. She called from upstairs and insisted that Allison go up to Dr. Locke's office. Thank you. So whoever was after Mr. Green chased him into this alley. Okay, but why wouldn't they just grab him and take him after he collapsed? You know, can I say something? When, when, when Allison saw him laying there, she kind of screamed so loud that I thought every cop in town was going to come running. So that that guy that was chasing your patient, you know, probably did too. Well, for once, Allison's big mouth comes in handy. <laughs> yeah. I saved his life. I'm going to have a look around. I got to get back to the hospital in a few minutes. Hmm. Tell Borgman I said hello. Be careful. You're the one going into the lion's den. I can watch out for myself. Promise me you'll page me, OK? The minute I find anything. Good. Thanks. Later. Let's go. I got it. So what do you think you are, Starsky and Hutch? <laughs> Actually, I was thinking more along the lines of uh, the mod squad. <laughs> See, I know I'm cool like Link and everything, but your doctor friend here is Pete. Uh, I don't know. He's got that whole Irish accent thing going on. It's okay, killing me. Okay, whatever. I'm you. Listen, just keep your eyes peeled, okay? Let me know if you see anything <laughs> suspicious, but no heroics. You're already in enough trouble. Oh, come on, whatever. I got eyes of my own, all right? So I might as well use them. Besides, I got plenty of time on my hands. No job yet? No. No, not a lot of demand for a suspected uh, kidnapper slash murderer. Oh, come know? on. Jamal, that's old news. And before you know it, it will be forgotten. Yeah, maybe. I'm serious. Your life is finally coming together, you know? You and Allison, against all odds, the two of you together. It's good. Don't tell me. What, you you and Allison? What, what's wrong? Nothing. I'm, I'm not telling you nothing. All right, besides, I mean, you know. I mean, come on, me and Allison, you know, we, we never really were together anyway, so. What are you, you You guys are soulmates, okay? You guys are like Romeo and Juliet, like, like Brad and Jennifer. Yeah, I, I, or like you and the doc, huh? Oh. <laughs> you know, this, this fairy tale stuff is, it only happens once in a million years. You're right. It only happens once in a million years. So why are you throwing it away? You know, this fairy tale junk, Jamal, only happens once. Doesn't happen twice. Well, I know you believe in this this happy ending. No, but I don't. You're right, I do. I do. I gotta go, okay? I gotta go. Be careful, and I'll, I'll see you later. See ya. Okay, so Nana says I need to listen to you. So you have two minutes. Go. Your family's very worried about you, Allison. What? Good. OK, minute 45. You've got to admit that since the incident, you have been acting irrationally. You know what? This actually isn't about me or my best interests. This is about Jamal. Maybe you'd see things differently from inside the Van Wyck Institution. Sorry, I don't go anywhere that doesn't have room service. This isn't a joke. Your family can have you committed. No, they can't. I am not crazy. Well, as the consulting psychiatrist, that would be my decision, not yours. Allison, you got the room number wrong again for our appointment. No, I won't do that again, especially since Dr. Locke here thinks that I belong in a mental hospital. Well, I can see it's time again to bone up on the facts. Allison is 18, and she already has a therapist. I've been retained by the Barrington family to evaluate Allison's mental and emotional condition. Which apparently you've already jeopardized by threatening to have her committed. She's been exhibiting self-destructive behavior. Meaning Jamal. Meaning you. With my help, Allison is going to see that the only way that she can survive is to never see you again. Just like Livy did.
Livy's life to turn her against her family, but you failed, Kevin. This time, I was able to save someone I love from, from you destroying them. Oh, this isn't about Livy, Rachel. It is about your own paranoia, feelings of inadequacy. Oh, oh yes, a pathological need to control. <laughs> this is so typical of you. Whenever you feel threatened, you need to attack. Is it because they're young and vulnerable, Rachel? Is that what makes you feel so powerful? I just want to make sure you never hurt another innocent girl. I know. That's your life's work, protecting the young and innocent women everywhere from the evil Kevin Collins. But it isn't them you're protecting. It's you. Get out. You know, Livy really called it right. You're cold, controlling, and uncaring. I said get out. She did leave out the part about your being an emotional vampire, however, how you don't care who gets hurt along the way. I didn't hurt Livy. No, that honor goes to you, Kevin. Now that she knows the truth about you and Grace, I mean, we have a bond between us that not even you can break. Thanks, Rachel. Well, for what? For helping me to make a decision. I am in search of a missing doctor. Ah, 6'1", dark hair. Sexy, warm, charming, and very handsome. If he hadn't been fired, I'd think you were talking about Dr. Thornhart. He's about the sexiest, cutest thing I've seen around here in a long time. Besides my husband, of course. Of course. Is that who you're looking for? Yes, that's who I'm looking for! Have you seen him? He's not in his office. Yeah, I did see him earlier. Want me to page him? Yes, please. Tell him to meet me in the on-call room. Dr. Okay, Sanchez I'll do. Thank you. Are you sure you weren't followed? Yes, I'm sure. Look, if I'm going to do this, I want to do it face to face. I can't do that. Uh, my identity could be compromised, and we don't, uh, we don't want that to happen to you either, do we? No, we don't. I wouldn't even be doing this if it... Look, can we please just get this over with, okay? If it weren't for the $20,000 reward, I know that. Your ad said you might be seeking legal action. I just want to make sure you get your day in court. You are you're amazing the way you, you're willing to take on all those people at General Hospital. Those are powerful people there. Yeah, well, everybody else in this town may be spineless, but I'm not. I am just so sick of those rich jerks living in their big houses and driving their fancy cars, thinking they're better than everybody else. Oh, well, must have treated you really bad, huh? I am just very, very tired of their holier-than-thou attitude. I mean, Lucy Co. Baldwin, all the money in the world couldn't take the trailer park out of that girl. And let's, let's not forget the Barringtons. Snooty Amanda Barrington couldn't throw a Frisbee without my help, let alone a party. Neil, there's, a, there's something I need to tell you, and it's pretty important. Look, I, I don't really know how to say it. Is it about my tests? Am I sick again? No, no, there's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with you. 